I almost forgot about you today. Uh, it is Monday, it's 3 p.m., 3.17 p.m. Getting ready to leave the office early today. Um, got a little bit more work to do later, but um, I started up CrossFit, so I've been doing like the basics covered in the morning, and then I gotta go get my actual lift in in the afternoon. So, about to go get a lift in, but um, Monday, same old thing. We always start the week off with our leaders, um, getting them kicked off. Um, it's kind of like the most important thing you can do, I feel, is get your senior most people aligned, uh, super rich in context, and, uh, and you know, running their teams. And if you think, if you're thinking to yourself, are things changing so often? It's only just been a week. Yes. I mean, sometimes things come up. Sometimes there's key projects that you don't want to bottleneck. And sometimes it's just good to go over the same old thing. Um, so I know a lot of people talk about efficiency. I'm not that efficient of a guy. I am very effective though. Meaning I'll get the job done, but, um, it's not necessarily like you tell me once and then I'm running with it. I need to hear it over and over again, examine it in every single way. So I know all these blogs and stuff have probably oversold us on efficiency, right? You wanna be super efficient. No, your company needs to be efficient, okay? Your company needs to be efficient, but my decision-making process at the top just needs to be effective. And yeah, a lot of the operational decisions, so the things that are happening on a mundane, like that, that can be efficient. There's no need to spin your wheels on a bunch of shit that happens day in, day out, right? Anything that's mechanical, repeatable, can be automated, therefore it can be efficient. So efficiency all up and down the horn. But then when you get to the strategic layer, right? So people that are deciding on strategy, I think that that should be probably half efficient, half effective. So you should have some kind of process that you follow. Um, for us, it's OKRs. So that's a goal setting framework. Basically the O stands for objective and the KR is the key result. So for example, we wanna be profitable. That's the objective. And then the key result is you're measuring your profitability. So we have a system that we use, right? An operating system. But still I like for it to be very, very open to intuition and judgment um, and you know dynamism. So again, all operational stuff, highly efficient. When you get to the strategic layer, I think it could be half effective, half efficient. But then when you get to the super high level of the company, um, which is where I spend you know, a lot of my time in, I don't necessarily like being crazy efficient, right? That's actually the space that you have to toil things over in your mind and toss some ideas back and forth, look at the same problem a million ways. Say, hey, have we looked at it this way? Have we looked at it this way? Are you sure in your probing? And, uh, and um, now the, the trick is you can't do that with a large form of people because then you're gonna drive everybody nuts, A, and then B, you're gonna confuse everybody, and C, you're actually gonna slow down the um, company and your output and your service to your customers. So the key is, once you've built and like this doesn't apply to every business, but um, also it's important to note because we're s still quite small as a company, probably 30 full time employees. Um, some of our people that are involved in the in the strategic meetings are also in what we call our skunk, which is the senior most people. Right. So sometimes it's the same person, but different hat. That's a nugget right there, by the way. Sometimes it's literally. Like we have like operational meeting, strategic meeting, and then like our executive meeting. And it's sometimes the same people. It's just that you're wearing a different hat, right? And by the way, I pay, a, we pay an, a top tier executive coach in Silicon Valley that, um, you know, teaches us these things. And I'm, I'm here, I'm passing this on to you for free, right? So, well, just your time, which I appreciate you watching. Um, and I, by the way, I can't believe that some of you guys really are tuned in like that. It, it means a lot. And also it's encouraging me to just continue to lock in on a, on a, you know, regular cadence. Cause we're, we're in a groove now of this thing. I feel, you know, I started with a day or two and then I took some time off from, because I had to move to Austin 
and then I was producing slowly. But now, as you can see, I'm producing more frequently, probably four or five days a week. But um, so, yeah, so the nugget was our coach reminded us, hey, remember, you can have different hats, same people, different hats. So it's role versus soul is the framework that we use. Right. So you can have the same soul. Right. But be thinking from a different role. Um, you should also think about that when you're deciding on who to hire and who to fire. Hey, one thing is like, I like this person, but what are the roles that I need here? And that will help you think more clearly. Sometimes you want to over-index for the soul, sometimes the role. Everything depends on startups, as you'll see. But, but anyway, the point is that when, you, when you're in this space of like very effective ideating, you don't want to drag it down with the need to be hyper fucking efficient and everything a number and everything a process and everything of this and of that. But the key is you want to keep it a small forum meeting. You want to make sure all the people that you need in the room are there and you want to keep it to like six or less. Ideally, we're, we're at, we have five people, but that's only because we have co-CEOs. I think like it would be four people if we only had one CEO. Um, and if you're curious, yeah, the CEO thing, I think, uh, the co-CEO thing, I think, works works well enough. Um, I don't think I could run the business by myself, as is, to be honest, right? Like, I'm a very good CEO in certain aspects and not so good in others. Um, I take it back. I'm a good CEO in certain areas and not so good... I wouldn't go as far as to say very good. Maybe as compared to like, you know, um, like new, 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 newcomers, fine. But the people in and around my circle at this point are like perfect. You know, I'm in, it's like I kind of like entered the NFL, the NBA, you know, and I'm a first year. That's honestly how I feel, right? Like I know some of you guys have been following me for some time, but you know, I've been yapping for longer than I've been building, to be honest. Like I was a CEO of like a little laundry business when I was 18. I did that for three years. I got some good experience there managing like 15 people at a young age. But then from there, you know, I ran an incubator. I was a CEO, but of a, of a non-for-profit incubator, eh, a little different. And then I was a partner at a firm, very different. And then I was kind of like a media persona, different. This is my first time not being the CEO of an operating company, because I did that with my laundry business, but this is my first time being the CEO of a venture-backed company. And, um, and you know, it's a humbling experience because you're in and around. I, I get to be around people, right? Because why? Why is that true? Why do I get to be around other top-tier CEOs? Well, because the investment firms that invest in us, right, in Loop, which of which, by the way, we have many, right? Because... When you do a financing, like we raised $20 million in October 2021, it wasn't just one firm. It's probably four or five firms that each write you a check. And each one of those firms invests in a bunch of other businesses. And so, you know, then you get, they typically invite you to go to these things once a year or sometimes it's like on Zoom. And you get to meet all the other CEOs, which are all other professional CEOs. Many of them also first-time founders. Everybody dealing with the same imposter syndrome. Everybody dealing with, are we going to die as a company? Am I going to, am I good enough? Am I not? Um, but what happens when you deal with these firms, as we've been lucky to deal with, that have a good amount of history, like in our case, our lead investor, Foundry, they, Foundry's been working with the same founders for a long time. Sometimes 20, literally 20 or th like, I don't want to say 30, but sometimes 20 years, like a founder that invest like started something sold it or failed and then tried again and foundry backed him again and again like you know there is legitimately a small group but a group of guys and women that like um know their shit like i'm ima imagining imagine all the stuff that if, if you're watching this you probably run some kind of business or i don't know, by the way could you guys let me know in the comments you know, are, are the people watching startup founders, aspiring entrepreneurs? Are you small business owners? Do you work in a corporate and you're just interested in startups um, or any other variation of that? I'd be, I'd be curious to know, but, but uh, 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 fuck, I 
forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's this group of, like, guys and women that, like, are very good. Are very, very good. And that's who I like to measure up against. And, you know, maybe as compared to the average business person, certainly when you look at America comparatively, you know, I would put myself in the top decile. But then when you hone in on, like, um, for size, like, scale of company, you know, there's a lot of CEOs of companies that we never heard of that, you know, are very efficient, produce very good results, and are not out there on social media or YouTube fucking blabbing about it. They're professional CEOs. They keep even dispositions. They do this for a living. Some of them are not not even founders. Some of them are literally just hired guns. Like once a company is sold and bought and sold again, you just hire a CEO to run that shit. And so, you know, the whole point was I'm good in certain aspects. Carrie's good in other aspects. Together, we are much stronger as a team because an insurance company is kind of a complex thing to run. And if I were the one purely running it, it would lean a little too heavily in my style and then she were the one she were the one it would lean a little too heavily in her style so in our case we're kind of a two-headed monster that um i think works well to do the storytelling that we need to do and raise the capital and then also produce the um very technical side of the business that i don't i don't really talk about as much here because you know it's not my side of the house but Anyhow, that's Monday, right? Aligning your leaders. And remember, what are some of the kind of... I'm going to interact a little bit more in, in this one. I'm, done. I'm just feeling it. Maybe it's because it's sunny out. But what are some of the, the, thing, the nuggets to distill here? Effective versus efficient. Efficient being um, process-driven and auto, somewhat automate, automated and highly repeatable. And effective meaning you just got to the right outcome. You don't need to be efficient for everything. You don't need to be effective. Uh, you want to always be effective. You don't always need to be efficient. And the more mundane a task is, the more repeatable, the more room there, you should make it efficient and ideally automated. But the more strategic a function or a thought process, you should layer in less emphasis on efficiency and more efficiency on like effectiveness. Right. So, for example, if you're setting a strategy, who cares if you got to it really fucking fast if you're going the wrong direction? Right. If you're if you're trying to chart where to go, the most important thing is figuring out where you're going. You don't want to take forever, but like it doesn't matter if you decide super quickly where you're going and you know the mileage and the this and the that, but you're going in the wrong direction. And then the layer above is like company level betting the company type things and or super specific things that are little that are small but big log jams. And that you're being purely focused on effectiveness and you just want to do that with a small group of people because if you have a bunch of people in a forum where you're just, hmm, let me see here, pontificating, you're going to screw their efficiency up and it's going to bring you down. So that's one. The other thing that we explored was role versus soul, remember? So that's a good way to look at people, right? Like, uh, uh. So sometimes you have the same person in three different meetings, but they have to be wearing different hats. So that role versus soul. Sometimes you have a really great person in a seat doing a job for you, but they're actually doing two roles and they're not super good at either. And that might be okay um, with you. And, or it might not be, it depends on where the company is. So, that's kind of another, oh, that might be, that might be very interesting to do. I just got an idea, but I'm going to take, there's some really great information that was circulated at the beginning of the downturn by Sequoia, this really great venture firm. And they had a, a number of different pictures. And I remember those pictures helped me a lot. So what I'm going to do is like drop those pictures in, maybe on Instagram, if you guys follow me there. And I'm going to do some green screen talking head stuff. Um, just breaking down some of those um, topics um, because they helped me a lot. So the, the whole point that I was going to layer on there was as I'm learning, everything depends in startups. So everything's on scales and axes and so on. And in the case of like people, um, basically there's a rising tide. So money's very available. And then there's a ebbing tide, like money's not as available. When the tide is really high and there's plenty of money, 
if you look at if you look at um like a three by three right so like nine squares in total right three 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 i don't know if this is going to make sense but basically like potential and performance right so people on all the way on the top right have a lot of potential and performance those are your greens that top section is your greens you always want them those are your superstars then you have your really bad performers probably just the bottom left like they're just you never want them but then the the key thing is you have these yellows in the middle right so you have reds yellows green if you look at your talent that way um, and you can kind of you can kind of like I periodically assess the team um, in this way, like, okay, we're superstars, yellows, reds, toxic, you know, and toxic talent risks, they might, they might just not be good for your company, right? Like, they might have just gone through bad experiences that were your fault, to be honest, or my, our, our fault. Um, um, and then they stop believing in the company, and then eventually they sour, and then they, they bring other people down, so you really got to be careful for that. But... But so that's easy, right? If they're green, yeah, you want to fucking keep them and nurture them. And if they're red, you got to get rid of them. But the yellows is the is the kind of the key thing. So when there's a lot of money, you can afford to have the yellows. Like a yellow might be someone who's really good at their job and they want to grow into the next job and they've never done that job before. And so, you know, it's not ideal when you have low resources because then they got to learn on your dime, right? They got to... Uh, but it is ideal when you have a lot of resources because then you can teach them the job, even though you know they're learning on the job, you're developing this talent and they're going from a yellow to a green and then ideally they stick around in your company. So, it, so there is no one thing, no one strategy that's always good every, at, at every time. And that's what makes this game so hard is everything depends and as you get smarter, you start to be able to discern, oh yeah, that's right, I did that thing and that was successful then, but it's a different market now. Or, um, uh, or the consumer sentiment is different, or the capital availability is different, or I'm in a different stage in my business, or we just need a different thing now, or I have a different type of manager that leads this type of, these teams differently. Like there's so many, so many variables to consider at all times that makes this, probably one of the harder things to do. Um, as you grow, more things become cemented and there's less ground around you moving. And as the ground settles, there are less variables to consider. And then slowly you start to develop some normalcy. And that's why big, particularly, it, I think the big variable, by the way, here is growth, right? Like when you're like, we grew 230% last year, year over year. You know, we'll probably do a similar amount this year. And so like as you're growing super fast, that's that's if you're wondering like why all this change, that's what it is. It's the growth. But as you flatline a little bit in your growth and then then you become more of like think of like a blue chip stock, like these companies that they at probably at one point had their success and then they just hold value. And when you're not growing as quickly, things are changing less quickly. The, which means jobs within the company are changing less quickly, which means you start to have people that value predictability and normalcy work for you and the pace slows down and decision making slows down. And um, there's a view that people have that those companies are probably slowly going out of business. I'm, I'm in that camp. I think that those companies are slowly going out of business. However, there's a devil's advocate view, which I also somewhat believe, which is like, it's not a bad place to be. If you're a fucking 60 year old company, you've been cash flowing for a, a long time, like a motherfucker, somebody owns that business. Somebody's cash flowing. There's a family out there, many families out there benefiting or employing people and so on. So I would like Luke to be big, old and boring at some point, to be honest, you know, it's not, it's not that that, that wouldn't fulfill me per se, but I would feel like we created something successful if we serve our customer really well. And our customer, by the way, some of you may not even fully know what we do, but we're a car insurance company and we created some technology that basically allows us to price risk without using credit score. So there's a bunch of people out there with a below 700 credit score that get raked over the fucking coals on car insurance. And it's our view that like car insurance, credit score should have nothing to do with car insurance, nothing. 
Credit score should be used for a loan, but car insurance is paid in advance. So your repayment capability is like neither here nor there. It was baked, FICO credit score was baked into insurance in 1989. It hasn't been, and maybe at the time it was like the most cutting edge data, but today we have phones and we have driving data and te telematics and blah, blah, blah. And like we, we just found a way better way to do it. So basically our technology takes anybody with a sub 700 credit score, but a really clean driving record. Um, and we give that person a much better price. And then, you know, we, we basically we have that IP, that, that technology, and we wrap an insurance product around it. Right. Because with that IP, you can probably build a bunch of different businesses off of it. But we decided to become a full stack insurer, which means we do our own claims, customer care, blah, blah, blah. Because the more vertically integrated you are, the more you can, the more value you can capture. But the trade off is the more expensive it is to run that business. So. I don't know, I guess I'm just rambling at this point, but um, yeah, we, we covered a bunch of stuff, role versus soul, rising tides of capital, everything depends, all that type of shit. With that said, I'm going to quickly wrap this up so I can, oh. duty calls, I'm gonna quickly wrap this up so I can, uh, um, Upload it and um, we'll call it a vlog. Sorry, there weren't a lot of different shots in this one, but there was like a lot of good information. So um, hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know um, where you're watching from, where, where you're based physically. And also let me know if you're a founder, aspiring, corporate, you know, we talked about that. And also thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Peace.